Alright, welcome! This video is the first in a series of two videos where I'm talking about convergence and divergence of sequences and series. So in this video I'm going to talk specifically about sequences and their convergence and divergence. So we say that a sequence, a sub n, is to converge if the elements approach a certain value over time. So basically this means that a sequence, which is like a list of numbers, converges if those numbers get closer to something over time. So formally we say that a sequence a sub n converges to a value l if the limit as n approaches infinity of the terms of a sub n is equal to l. So this means as we look at further and further terms in the list, in this sequence, eventually those terms should be reaching some value l. I like to think of them as settling on a specific location or really just approaching, reaching a set value. So as we look down the list, as n approaches infinity, as we go further and further away, the terms of the sequence are approaching some value l. Alternatively, we say a sequence diverges if it does not converge. So if it's just growing without bound, growing and growing, the terms are getting more and more negative, then it doesn't converge. Anytime it doesn't have that sort of settling point, we say the sequence diverges. Formally, we would say that the sequence a sub n diverges if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n does not exist. So if we try to take the limit looking further down the list of items in the sequence and there is no limit, then we say the sequence diverges. So to show you what this looks like, I'm going to take two pretty simple sequences that don't have too much complicated going on. So this might seem a little overly simple potentially, but I really just want to start with something super basic to show you how these concepts work. So let's determine if the sequences 1 over n and n converge. Alright, so let's start with the sequence 1 over n. So if we write this out, it looks like 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, and so on. So the denominator increases by 1 as n increases by 1. And we call this the harmonic sequence. So this is a common sequence that we see in math. You also will see it as a series, so when we sum up these values. But this is harmonic, it's 1 over n. So looking at this, I'm seeing that the denominators of the fractions are getting bigger. So that means the fraction itself is getting smaller as n approaches infinity, or as n gets larger. So as we go further and further in this sequence, the values of the sequence are going to get closer and closer to zero. So just looking at this, I'm pretty sure that this sequence converges to zero. But we can do this more formally by looking at the graph, and then also by doing the limit. So if we look at the graph of these values, when I'm putting n on the horizontal axis and the value of the sequence on the vertical axis, when n is 1, I have 1 as my value of the sequence. When n is 2, I have a half. 3, I have 1 third, and so on. So I'm seeing as we increase n, these values are approaching 0, as we just described. Then, using the limit, we can check for convergence formally by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, that's of our sequence, and when we increase to infinity, this limit goes to zero. So the solution to this limit is zero, and this means the sequence 1 over n converges to zero. Okay, so as I mentioned, this one isn't anything too complicated. We can think about it multiple ways, but these are going to get more complex, and this is a good starting point for us to begin at. Okay, next let's consider the sequence n. So here the first term is 1, then we go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is really just like a counting sequence where we add 1 each time. So this specific type of sequence is an arithmetic sequence. Anytime we have a set addition between each of the consecutive terms, so here we're adding 1 each time, that's an arithmetic sequence. I'll talk a little more about that in a different video, but just know here that this is a type of arithmetic sequence. So just looking at this, I'm pretty confident that this sequence will diverge. As n gets bigger, the sequence terms are just getting bigger as well. So as we continue growing n, the sequence is also growing. So again, we can graph this and do it with a limit. As n increases, so do the sequence values. So we see that this is going off to infinity. And we can do it more formally with a limit. So the limit as n approaches infinity of n is just infinity, so this limit does not exist. This means that the sequence n diverges. 
So because the sequence is getting larger and larger over time, it's not settling at any point like the previous sequence where it was getting smaller and going towards zero. So this sequence diverges. Now, we could do tons of these problems with divergence and convergence of sequences, but they're really just as simple as finding the limit of the sequence. So they're really just limit problems. We could make them super complicated and do really complicated limits, but it's really just that. There's nothing a whole lot new here. We're just looking over time, do the values approach a certain place? And this is sort of like looking at a function and if it approaches a certain place, if that function has a limit as n goes to infinity. However, this process gets a lot more interesting once we start considering series and not just sequences, but understanding the sequences is important first. And what I want you to take away is that determining if a sequence converges is just as simple as taking its limit, with the knowledge that simple could mean pretty complicated for a limit problem, but the concept isn't too complicated for convergence. Okay, and to wrap up this concept, I just want to do one more example. This is an example of a geometric sequence, and we'll be looking more at geometric series in the next set of videos. So let's determine if the sequence 1 over 2 to the n converges or diverges. So to get a sense for what's going on, let's write out some of the sequences and see what's happening. So the sequence starts at n equals 1, so I just have 1 over 2 to the 1 power, that's 1 half. Then for n equals 2, I have 1 over 2 squared, that's 1 fourth. For n equals 3, I have 1 over 2 cubed, that's 1 eighth. I'll have 1 over 16, 1 over 32, etc. moving on as n gets larger. So as we look at these terms, I'm noticing that the denominators are getting larger, meaning that the fraction itself is getting smaller. This is similar to our harmonic sequence, where the values of 1 over n were tending to 0, I'm thinking that the same thing is going to happen here. But we can do this formally using a limit. So I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 half to the n power. I'll just rewrite this as 1 over n divided by 2 over n, with the limit still there. 1 to the n is just 1. Then I can consider what happens to 2 to the n as we approach infinity. So 2 to some power, as that power gets larger, that value is just going to get bigger. So 2 to the n goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. This means we're doing 1 divided by something that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So as n approaches infinity, we're dividing 1 into more and more and more pieces. So this is going to 0. It's very similar logic to the limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity. So this matches our intuition that these terms of the sequence are getting closer to 0 as n approaches infinity. And so we say that the sequence 1 over 2 to the n converges to 0. Okay, so that is it for this video, just looking at how sequences converge or diverge. In the next video, I will talk about how series converge or diverge. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.